All right, we will finish up our module or our lesson, excuse me, on uh, relative dating. We'll go into depth in another video lecture about the law of superposition, but this is picking up right where we left off, which was with moles and casts. Another type of fossil that we learned about yesterday were our carbon films. Remember, all living things contain carbon. When an organism die, dies, eventually only the carbon will remain. The carbon films are actually created because a thin carbon layer of carbon is left behind. And this is really awesome because it can show the organism's delicate parts, like leaves on a plant. So often we don't find fossils of plants because of how soft their tissue is. So because we have carbon plants or carbon films, we're able to see some of what the prehistoric plants look like, which is really cool because without that we might not be able to see them. All right, so oftentimes these are formed when two slabs, when an organism dies and is caught between two flat slabs of rock, and those slabs exhibit pressure, squeezing the organism, leaving behind only the carbon. Again, the organism is already dead when this happens. Awesome. Trace fossils. This uh, trace fossils are anything that shows the activities of organisms, so they can be like footprints or burrows or uh, trails. An animal makes a footprint when it steps in the sand or mud. Over time, that footprint is buried in layers of sediment, and then the sediment becomes solid rock. So if more sediments don't compact that footprint, then um, we will actually be able to see this trace fossil in real life. Awesome. So again, you're going to have to pause these in order to take down your notes, but I don't have much to say about these fossils because we learned about them on Monday and Tuesday this week. All right, here is our uh, other types of fossils. These can be broadly categorized as preserved remains or body fossils. Some organisms get preserved in or close to their original state. So these are really awesome. They show us a lot about the organism. There are three general ways that this happens. All of them are airtight spaces. Remember, we need to stop the decay in order for a fossil to form. The very first one is amber. So an organism is trapped in tree resin or sap. More resin covers it, sealing the insect inside. It hardens into amber, and then we've got the fossil. This is how we found um, the dinosaur blood in Jurassic Park. If you've read the book or seen the movies, a mosquito was caught in amber. The mosquito had um, intake, intook the blood of a dinosaur, and then scientists were able to extract that blood, recreate the DNA, and then eventually recreate dinosaurs. But again, that was science fiction. The other uh, two ways that we can have preserved remains are tar. So an organism is trapped in a tar pit, which was really common back in the days of the dinosaur, and it's still semi-common today, not in where we live, but warmer areas, definitely. So an organism is trapped in this tar pit. The tar pit stop soaks into its bones and stops the bones from decaying. Oftentimes, we'll find whole organisms like that. or um, kind of mass graves of organisms because many organism, organisms will get stuck in tar pits and not be able to get out. The other example here is ice. So an organism can die in a region that is very cold. Its body is covered in frozen ice which preserves the organism, even its hair. So as ice is one of our best preservers we've learned because our hair is preserved as well. Very, very awesome. Maybe that's why Walt Disney is said to be frozen in ice over time. That means that he's pretty preserved there. That's just a rumor. Don't believe that. And lastly, for our uh, general relative dating video, we're going to talk about index fossils. So index fossils are organisms that lived in many areas that existed only during a specific span of time. To be an index fossil, the organism needs to be widespread, meaning that it was found all over the world, hopefully. It needs to be very abundant, meaning that Again, um, it, it had a very large number of organisms living within the species, and it needed to live for a ge geologically short period of time, maybe only a thousand years or a couple of thousand of years. Scientists use index fossils to match rocks and rock layers. So we know that when we find um, an, a specific index fossil in one layer, 
it is the same age as if we found the index fossil in another layer of a rock, meaning that we can kind of tell the relative age. So if you look at our example down here, this orange chunk has our index fossil in it in this one and this one. So we can say with general certainty that these two rocks were formed around the same time. We can also say, because of the law of superposition, that the orange rocks are older than both the red rock and the green rock, and the gray rock, and younger, or older, excuse me, than the yellow rock, the blue rock, and the brown rock, and with relative certainty that they are younger than the red rock, the green rock, and the gray rock. So this can be used to kind of compare and contrast and give us a really good general idea of what was going on in our geological past. The trilobite, welcome to one of our examples of an index fossil. You've seen him before on the screen. He is one example of an index fossil, meaning that we use him because he lived a relatively short period of time and during a very specific geological time period. Trilobites were a group of hard-shelled animals whose bodies had three distinct parts. You can see those distinct parts in this fossil right here. They evolved in shallow seas more than 500 million years ago. So we know that when we find a trilobite fossil in one of our fossil layers, that the rock was formed generally in a shallow sea area. So the rock was formed and the area was underwater at one time if we found these. And that the rock was found about 500 million, or the rock was formed about 500 million years ago. Pretty cool, right? And I've got some funnies for you before we move on to the next lecture. So we believed, this is again an example of a tar pit. Here's the scientist telling the general public, we believe these dinosaurs died playing twisters or became trapped in the same tar pit over time but most likely it was the twister. And we have a funny of some dinosaurs, maybe having a pre-conference before they became extinct at the end of the Mesozoic era. The picture's pretty bleak, gentlemen. The world's climates are changing. Remember, they were getting colder. The mammals are taking over. Remember, we've changed from the Mesozoic era, the age of the reptiles, to the Cenozoic era, the age of the mammals, uh, during this time period. So the mammals are taking over, and we have a brain the size of a walnut. Did you know that? All right, pick up at the next lecture. Oh, that one was kind of sad. All my friends are dead. That's kind of sad. Um, We'll pick back up with the law of superposition and your notes another time. Have a great day, guys.